In an interesting thread that started last night but is developing now, at Green the Only and some other people have gotten into it about whether Tesla can solve full self-driving with Tesla Vision only. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So this tweet thread started August 26th, which is two days ago as I record this. It's now the 28th Sunday. But anyway, I don't know the details of this because they never actually know, but motorcyclist dies after being rear-ended by high-speed Tesla in Boca Raton. And the implication, of course, is that full self-driving was involved. I don't know if that's true or not. Obviously, we'll have to wait for some sort of information that comes out from Tesla or other sources. The the interesting part, and by the way, tragedy, obviously, I'm not, you know, with anything on anybody but it's always you know you just have to like wait until you actually hear what the circumstances were because almost always it turns out to be a human beings a human error and actually it would be a human error anyway because remember these are ADAS systems at this point they're driver assistance systems not automated driving so the driver is always responsible but even the question of whether any kind of full self-driving or uh, t- traffic aware cruise control or anything like that was on is unclear at this point Anyway, the interesting part of the thread starts after this, and sadly, I'm missing the one tweet that I need that started the whole thing, which because I don't even know who the account owner is because it limits who can view their tweets. So anyway, at Green the Only was responding to this other tweet, and I'll take it from there. If you don't know Green the Only, He's a really, really smart guy. (laughs) He reverse engineers a lot of the stuff that Teslas do and the full self-driving and the autopilot and everything. He has access to the code and he can look at what's going on under the hood much more deeply than the rest of us can. So he's definitely somebody you should follow on Twitter if you don't because he actually provides a ton of really useful information. He also is critical of Tesla where he needs to be critical. So I appreciate that too because oftentimes, you know, I as well as a lot of you, I'm sure kind of live in a Tesla is great bubble. And so it's good once in a while to take a step back and go like, okay, maybe they're not doing everything perfectly. So that's what we're going to look at today. So anyway, he's responding to this other tweet that I can't see by saying, what did you expect would happen after reaching a local maximum anyway? What that means is in training, you I usually think of it as local minima, but people talk about local maxima, but basically it's the best performance you can get with the neural network or other machine learning architecture. So you basically run up against a ceiling. <laughs> that's the problem. And when I talk about headroom in other videos, and I'll put a link to a few of those up above if you're interested in looking. But when I talk about headroom, that's what I mean. It's where we are now versus what the local maximum is. Like how far can you go before you bump up against that and the learning actually starts to slow down and doesn't get better over time. So that's what he's talking about here. Espen then responds to that, which local maximum are you referring to here? And then Greenlee only goes back and looks at what Elon Musk talked about in 2021, which is about a year ago at this point. Beta 10 or maybe 10.1 going to pure vision set us back initially. Vision plus course radar had us trapped in a local maximum like a level cap. Pure vision requires fairly advanced real world AI, but that's how our whole road system is designed to work. Neural nets with vision. So this is worth talking about and Elon has tweeted about this since 2021, but basically what happened was using radar. So it used to be that Tesla vision that wasn't Tesla vision. It had its eight cameras, but it also had radar and radar bounces off things in front of you. So it's really, really useful in traffic because you can know exactly how far ahead of you, the car in front of you is, or other things like that. So it allows you to be much, much more, you know, close follow distances. It allows you to be more confident about distances to things, et cetera. It's very important for that type of thing. But the problem is it's kind of a crutch. And what they realized, and Elon was more specific about this in later tweets. And of course, Andre Karpathy was as well in some of his talks. But basically the vision system was, a lot of its flaws were being masked by the fact that radar was helping it out. Now, the downside of radar is it tends tends to be very kind of overall. It's not very specific about things. It tends to just blanket the world with radar signals and then bounce back stuff. So it can be very error prone. It can it can think something like a bridge is on the road. It can also think something like a truck that's stopped on the road that's kind of in the road is a bridge. So it can make really big mistakes and that causes some significant problems and can lead to actual accidents. And that actually did happen to Tesla's many, many years ago, but they actually did have issues with the radar 
saying nothing was there, autopilot just continuing on, and a couple of people died because of really bad accidents due to that. So anyway, Espen responds to this by saying, so your point is this Tesla relied on radar. Green the Only says, no, my point is ever since Tesla started to switch to Tesla Vision, it went downhill. The hope it will eventually reach a local minimum and then will raise till the next local maximum, hopefully higher than the old one. I think it's the hope is it will eventually reach a local minimum. Anyway, this is what Elon said, but few understood it correctly. And that is indeed what Elon said in this. I mean, if you look back at this tweet, he was definitely saying that they took a step backwards when they turned off radar. Espen replies, so you're saying that statistically there have been more crashes per mile since Tesla switched to Tesla Vision source. Green says, I don't have the statistics like that. Obviously, Tesla doesn't really break those out that specifically. But based on my observations, the Tesla Vision usability is way lower than it was before. Others made similar observations like this too, although I don't know exactly who he's talking about. You don't need to believe me. Elon himself said they are retreating from a local maximum. Again, there is no actual source. I'm not positive I know that that's true that Elon said that right now they're retreating from a local maximum because it seems like they're making a lot of progress with transformers and they're actually continuing to be able to improve the software. But again, maybe he has some information that I don't have. He then goes on to say, somewhat counterintuitively, lower usability means crashes go down because people don't use the software as much. We see it with other ADAS vendors. So what that means is if the software works crappy, you just don't use it, right? You turn it off and don't use it. So therefore, the statistics will look even better because people aren't using it. So therefore, it doesn't crash as much. So anyway, it, it could be that way for sure. So then a reply. So in short, we don't know if it's better or worse than with radar. Then Green the Only said something that I think is very, very pertinent. We do. The objective measurements show us. You can set auto steer to 90 miles an hour and a follow distance of one with radar. You cannot without. So the radar list system is measurably worse. And what that means, if you're doing full self-driving or any kind of follow or something with Tesla Vision, you used to be able to scroll the distance to number one, which was a very, very short distance between you and the car in front of you. The minimum distance now is two, which is a much longer distance between you and the car in front of you. And actually, unfortunately, it has the effect of meaning that a lot of cars in heavy traffic like in Atlanta will just pull in in front of you all the time. So it actually makes a really big difference in heavy traffic. If you're following at a distance of one, you basically can't squeeze in between you and the car in front of you. And with radar, that was definitely available. And like he said, 90 miles an hour was the maximum speed you could set this for. Tesla, when they rolled out Tesla Vision, it was 75 miles an hour. They then increased it to 80 and now it's 85 miles an hour. So it's not that much slower, but the really big difference is that you can't set the follow distance to one at highway speeds or actually at all. And by the way, one doesn't really mean one car length or anything because obviously the faster you travel, the more distance you have to give, but it's the relative distance. I think it's one to six or seven is the maximum. But basically, if you set it to the very, very long ones, it'll keep you really, really far away from the cars in front of you. But most people want it relatively close because otherwise, like I said, people cut in in front of them. So that that number one, the fact that number one is not there still, and the fact that we can't go 90 miles an hour like we can with radar systems does objectively indicate that the system, at least Tesla's not confident enough in the system to set it the same as with the radar. Then another reply 37 minutes ago as I'm doing this. Fair, but that might as well be to keep the system safe until it has been further tested. Vision system will clearly surpass radar plus vision if it hasn't already, as Carpathy talked about. And this is his talk, I believe, from a year ago. But anyway, this is a really interesting talk, and it does talk about sensor fusion issues and a lot of problems that Teslas have had in the past. Sensor fusion would be where the radar is saying no object is there and the vision system is saying there is an object. That caused a lot of problems for Tesla in the past past before they switched to Tesla Vision only, and that's actually why they did it. Then Green the Only responded to this, a system not verified safe is deficient to the one that is. I hope this is self-evident. And yeah, I'd have to say that's fairly self-evident. We'll see what the future brings us, but today Vision plus radar is superior to just Vision, and it'll arguably always remain so in certain conditions like low light, poor visibility, etc. I love the fact that Espen keeps pushing back about this. He says, yeah, disagree about that, but I think it comes down to you not believing Elon in this regard, and I do. And and he pulls out a tweet from Elon from October of 2021. Vision became so good that radar actually reduced signal to noise ratio. So radar was turned off. Humans drive with eyes and biological neural net. So it makes sense that cameras and silicon neural nets are the only way to achieve generalized solution to full self-driving, which is of course true. And it's a very positive statement that Elon says this. Interestingly enough, October 11th, I think I got my full self-driving beta, you know, allowance on the 21st or something. So this would have been just about the same time that I actually got full self-driving beta, which is kind of cool. 
But anyway, Green said, note how Elon's statement is forward looking, right? So it will be able to do this. It will be able to do this. We kind of knew Tesla's sensor fusion was poor already, and they chose not to improve it for whatever reasons. So it is possible that the chip shortage has something to do with this because radars were difficult to come by for a while. But I also know that Elon has discussed the fact that he told the AI full self-driving team that they had to turn off radar. He was the one that did it, and they were like, no, 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 no. Then they turned it off, and then they were like, oh, crap, we really bad at writing software. <laughs> had to go back to the drawing board. And now he says most of them say that they don't want to turn it back on. So this is another part of this whole thing. I believe that was the Tesla owners of Silicon Valley chat that he had where that came up, but I'm not positive that that was the spot. But anyway, he definitely said that. Another response, are the slides comparing vision to vision plus radar from Carpathy's presentation over a year ago also forward looking or did vision actually just perform better than radar? Green responds, like I said, the Tesla sensor fusion being subpar was long documented, certainly much longer than this. So what he's saying basically is that Tesla's autopilot team didn't do a good job with sensor fusion. So I'm not gonna take sides on that one, but that's just what he says. Anyway, but a single measurement does not mean on average it was not a win. In fact, Tesla still thinks that vision plus radar is a win on average. Espen then replied, since most Teslas in the fleet still use Vision Plus radar, I guess you could say that. And again, for people who haven't purchased cars without radar, and some of those cars do exist that don't even have radar built in, and are not doing full self-driving beta, they're still using Vision Plus radar. So that would be the majority of vehicles that are being produced at this point. Anyway, he says, I guess you can say that. Until the production of Vision-only Teslas surpasses those vehicles, or until everybody gets Tesla Vision over the air update. And Green says, even just allowing the same speed limit and follow distance would be a demonstration that Tesla now believes the two are at least comparable. And I think that that's actually a very valid point. I mean, that's completely rational. If we get that upgrade from Tesla for full self-driving beta, that really does mean that the Tesla Vision team feels like they're on par with Vision Plus Radar. So then, of course, I had to put in my two cents here. So then I said, great thread, and it is a great thread. I have to side with you, Green the Only. Tesla Vision in my Model Y is demonstrably worse than the older radar-based system. As you say, I can only do 85 and two car lengths behind a lead car. In addition, any rain leads to the degradation of performance. Eventually, I think Tesla might reinstate radar on cars that have them and put radar back into cars. Once they got rid of the radar crutch, they were able to make massive progress in vision, but it can never be 100% effective. Snow, fog, poor light, glare, etc, etc. So adding radar back, even if only for bad weather conditions or as a backup use or close follow on highways, would ultimately be a win. Let's see how far they can take Tesla Vision first, though. And I will add one more little piece to this puzzle, and that is that Tesla's been looking at what's called high-resolution radar as a possibility. So, like I said, when you do regular radar, it just shoots out stuff everywhere, and it bounces back information, and it says, this is traveling this speed, this is traveling at this speed. It just kind of creates buckets for that stuff. But high-resolution radar is more like a vision system where you can actually block off little areas, and you can look at that. And you could see how a radar system like that would be much more valuable than the old sort of classic radar system. So if they put in something like that, that would actually be a really, really big step up for, again, snow, fog, closely following people on the highway, stuff like that. It would be a really big win to put that back in again, but I don't think Tesla's in any rush. I want to be very specific about this. I think that Tesla's going to go as far as they can down the vision rabbit hole and see if they can make it work to at least level four autonomy, and then they might decide to start putting radar back in again to see if they can improve it even further and make it better than vision only could possibly be. And since I've started recording this, I've had a few extra texts, so why not just add those as well? Uh, Espen said, would love to see a video comparing Tesla with latest pure vision FSD beta versus old vision plus radar in the rain. After version 11, we can probably compare. I agree with this, and if anybody in the Atlanta slash Athens, Georgia area happens to have a car that has radar in it, which I believe would be a 2021 model or older, and also is not driving full self-drive beta and you want to contact me, we should definitely do that because we could do kind of a side-by-side -side test or something like that, or take both of them out under similar conditions and see how they perform. So that would be really interesting to check out. Another reply here is Kevin Smith replied, while I don't disagree on many points, the entire thread forks from taking Elon out of context. And as I said, it was a bit out of context and it was also a year ago or so. So that there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last year in terms of full self-driving. He said it set them back on the timeline for button release, which means that allowing people to get full self-driving beta, not on functionality or safety. I don't think that that's necessarily true. I believe that it actually did reduce the functionality of the entire system. And that's why they had to take a lot of time rolling out version 10 point 
three, I believe, or 10.1 or whatever it was. But anyway, that version of full self-driving beta that went to vision only was definitely a big problem. And it took them a long time to get to that level. And as Kevin Smith points out, and very, very truly, they are not turning existing radar back on quite the opposite. They are definitely not doing that right now. So like I said, I think Tesla is committed to going down the vision rabbit hole as far as they want. And I believe in the short term, this is my personal opinion, that they will be able to get to level four autonomy, which means driving under most circumstances completely autonomously. It'll be the level five thing where you want to drive in really, really wacky conditions where they might need to reinstate radar. And again, they might use high resolution radar as opposed to the older version of radar in order to do that. And then one more tweet because I really do think this one deserves a reply here. So Stecker Auto or Stecker Auto or however you pronounce that, sorry, I'm not exactly sure, says, doesn't putting radar back in negate the entire point of Tesla vision? Yes and no. If they do it in the short term because they have to, because they can't achieve level four autonomy without Tesla vision, then yes. But I believe that what they could do is they can get to level four and they can get as far as vision can get and it can be really, really good and it can work under most circumstances exceptionally well, but there would still always be exceptions because there are situations where human beings can't drive particularly well. I don't know if you've ever driven in a blizzard or a downpour, but if you do either of those things, it's terrifying because you can't see a thing. So you have your cameras and you have your neural net, but they don't work in those circumstances terribly well. So if you have some sort of a backup, even if it's just for those circumstances, even if it's just for crazy rain, fog, snow, things like that. If it's only used in those circumstances, that's still totally fine. I think if you have it, also using it in highway scenarios where you're going at very, very high speeds and following other cars very closely, I would personally like that because it would make me feel safer to know that the car knows exactly how far away the other one is. Pseudo radar that Tesla Vision is doing is really, really remarkable and I think it works great. But again, as Green the Only said, until Tesla makes it exactly complementary with their radar plus vision system, I'm still not sure chalking it up to being 100% compatible between the two. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought-provoking. This is a continuing thread. It's developing right now, so I'm gonna put a link to it in the description so you can check it out, and that way you can follow things along. And of course, I might respond more in the Twitter thread as well. So anyway, definitely check it out and see what's going on. It's really fascinating. I just thought this was interesting enough to kind of break it out and look at it specifically. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode, please do like it so other people can find it, because that's how YouTube's AI works. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. Again, a quick announcement that I'm going to be in San Diego on September 10th and 11th for the fully charged live event. If you're in the area, I've got a discount code for tickets in the description. So check it out. Come see me and Brian from My Tesla Weekend and Lars from Best in Tesla. We'll be there on a panel. It'll be awesome. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. I'm super sad to be missing the SLS launch on Monday, but I'm very busy. But if it gets delayed till Friday, I will definitely be there. So if you want to join the other folks from my Patreon group who are down in Florida right now, definitely check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.